Yo, what is up, uh, coding people that watch coding videos or studying for technical interviews? Today, we are going to be solving a Facebook coding interview challenge. Uh, this could show up in a Facebook interview. So if you're interviewing at Facebook, you might want to know how to do this problem. Uh, obviously, this could come up in any other uh, big company, too. You know, these the engineer is usually picking the question that they ask you. So today, we're going to be solving sorted squared array. This is on uh, code signal. If you want to look, I have the link in the description. Uh, and yeah, asked by Facebook, apparently. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, get started. So first thing we have to do is understand our problem. We're going to be given an array of integers, an array of numbers. And we're going to want to take that in our function. We're going to write a function that takes that array of numbers. And we all we have to do is output an array of numbers sorted. Another, we take a sorted array of numbers, we output a sorted array of numbers. The only thing is that array that we output has to be the squares of all of the elements of our input array. So we take our input array of numbers, we square every number in it. So like two, if that was a number, we'd square it, it would be four, and we output that. And just so we understand this a little bit better, this is what the function might look like, where we're taking in this int array, we have to write the code that goes in it, obviously, and we're returning an int array. So this is, once again, a sorted array, this input array we're getting in our function, this will be sorted, and our output array must also be sorted. A couple other constraints are the input array that we're getting is going to be between one element and 10,000 elements uh, in length. So it's going to be uh, not, it's not going to be empty. We don't have to worry about that. There's going to be at least one number in that array uh, and there could be up to 10,000. So there could be a lot of numbers. Another thing we want to notice that's really important is that some of these elements could be negative. So each element of the array is going to be between the values of 10, negative 10,000 and positive 10,000. So we could actually have an array of all negative numbers. We could have negative positives, only positives, but it's gonna be sorted and we have to output this sorted array of squared numbers. All right, so let's look at some examples now. Um, these are some input arrays on the left side and then this would be what we're outputting after our function's done. So all of the arrays that we get as input are going to be sorted, right? You can see we have some negative and positive values here and you'll notice that we're going to be squaring all of the elements in the array and returning an array of all the squares of these elements. But what we'll notice is that because the output array also has to be sorted, the first element, when it gets squared, doesn't necessarily become the first element of the output array. So the first value in this array, negative 7 squared, becomes 49, which is actually in the middle of our output array. Whereas, you know, the, the third element of the input array, negative one, actually squared is going to be one. And that's going to be the first element of our output array. This is because negative squared are positives and a very low negative squared could be higher than a positive number that we have in our array. So you can see if we square all these numbers, we get negative one squared is one, negative three squared is nine, four squared is 16. So negative seven squared is 49, eight squared, 64, 12 squared, 144. Down here, we have a couple more examples. So we could have an input array that is sorted in all positive numbers, right? So one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine. We could also have all negatives and you could see negative three, negative two, negative one. Squared is going to be the exact same thing because the negative squared are going to be equal to the positive squared. And last but not least, we have an empty array, which we don't have to worry about because that's not gonna be an input that we're getting. That is an invalid input. We're getting an input that has at least one element up to like 10,000 elements. So we understand, right? We understand what our input would look like. We understand what we have to do. We have to square these numbers. And uh, how are we gonna do that? That's pretty much all we have to figure out now. Oh yeah, and we have to make sure it's sorted. That's the hard part. All right, so let's think about this. We have an input array here and let's just, let's just think about how we can get this output array to be what it needs to be. My first instinct is to kind of loop through the array and just square everything, right? So if I'm looping through, I go here and I square this number. So we get 36 and then we put that into our output array. Then we go to the next number. So we get 16 and we put that into the output array. Then we go to the next number. So we get one, we put that into the output array. Two gives us four, so we put that in. Then we go to three. So we get nine and then we go to five and we get 25. So, I mean, we actually do accomplish like our goal is like squaring all the numbers and returning it as an output array, but it's not sorted. And that's the main problem here is that 
this is not sorted if we were to just loop through number by number, square them all, and put them into the array. So we either have to do some kind of post-processing. You know, maybe we can... You know what I'm thinking? We could just sort it now, right? So if we just do what we did, like we loop through, we square every number, we put it into an output array, and then we just sort it afterwards, like that's fine. We will get the correct solution. This is the correct solution. The only problem with this is that sorting is slow. So originally we had just been doing a linear loop, which is really good. Like that's what we want to get is linear in most of these problems, right? Linear is a great solution, uh, great time complexity. But when you sort, sorting, worst case time complexity is going to be n log n. There's no way around beating that. So sorting is not going to be efficient enough in this solution. We can bring this time complexity down. And that is the main objective. That's the main point of these coding interviews to show that you understand time complexity and you won't cheap out with this cheap, easy solution of just, ah, oh, we'll just square it and we'll sort it. But guess what? It's going to be a lot slower. N log N is way slower on huge data sets than linear runtime. So we want to, we're going to not be sorting. We're going to have to figure out a better solution and get this down to linear time. So here's the very simple but inefficient uh, method of just sorting the array. We just make our array, same our output array, uh, it's called square num, same size as the input array. We loop through the input array and we set the current element of the output array equal to, you know, just the element squared. So you just square each element as you go through that array, you traverse the array and you put it into the output array. And then afterwards, we just use a built-in sorting method. And you can do this in any programming language. And then you just return it. And that's pretty much it. Super easy, but inefficient. We can get this to linear. So let's do that. All right, so to solve this, uh, what we're gonna do is we're basically going to take our output array and we're going to initialize it to the same length of, as the input array, right? Because it's just all the squares and the numbers. It's gonna have the same amount of elements. Now the tricky part we've been really concerned about is that the square of each element doesn't necessarily go into the same index as the original element, right? Square of negative six isn't gonna go into the, fir the first element here squared doesn't go into the first element here when we have this output array sorted. So how do we handle that? Well, well basically what we're gonna do is we're going to loop backwards through our output array since we initialized its size already, we can just loop backwards and we can fill it up from largest element to smallest element. And we could do that by setting a pointer to the beginning of the input and the end of the input. Because uh, the biggest number is either gonna be here when you square this number, because it's the largest in the sorted version, or it's going to be the very smallest negative number because that squared could be a very large number as well. So we just are going to fill this up as we go backwards through our output array and say, hey, is this squared greater than this squared? Okay, well then we'll put this squared into the, you know, this position of the output array. And then we'll keep going. So maybe let's run through this example. And to make this a little bit easier, do less calculations, we can actually just take the absolute value of that negative number and see whether it's greater or just compare it to the positive number, right? Because whatever number is greater is going to be larger. So you know, if the absolute value of six, which is six, is greater than five, which is true, then we're gonna know that, you know, negative six squared is 36 is gonna be greater than five squared, which is 25. So we'll put 36 into the greatest position of our output array, which would be the correct one, because it's gonna be the largest element, and then we'll move and find the next largest element. Once we do that, once we use a number from the original input array, we also want to increment, you know, the counter, depending on which counter we're using. This variable would have been set to the beginning, so we'll be going towards the right side. This variable, if we use this, uh, we're going to be going to the left side, right? So in this case, we check the absolute value of negative 4. Is that greater than 5? No, because that would be 4 greater than 5. False. So we're going to use 5 this time. So that's actually going to be 25. So here we check the absolute value of negative four, which we said is four. That is greater than three this time. Uh, so we know that four squared is gonna be greater than three squared. So we take four squared and we put it in the next spot, 16. And then we keep going. And once that left pointer gets to a positive number, it's always gonna be less than the values of the right pointer because it's sorted, right? So as soon as we got to this positive one, we know that uh, this right pointer's value is always gonna get taken now. So we take the value of 3 squared, which is going to be 9. Then we take the value of 2 squared, which is going to be 4. And this is an optimal time complexity solution, uh, linear runtime. 
these are just variables these are there's no extra for loops going on here we have this initial output array we make at the beginning with the same size uh, we go backwards through that and then we just use these variables and uh, pick the larger the elements fill it in from you know largest to smallest uh, numbers and it's pretty simple let's look at it in code now so you understand a little bit better so here is the code for our linear runtime solution. Like I said, we initialize our output to be the same length as the input, right? It's gonna be the same length as the squares of those numbers. We also have two variables, the left and right pointers for the input array, right? Those are gonna be referencing indices of the input array and picking the larger of the elements to put into our output array, right? And then we have our output array, we already set it up. We loop backwards through our output array, i equals array.length minus one. Same, you could have set it to result.length minus one, same length. So we're looping backwards through the output array. We're checking the absolute value of that, the leftmost element in the input. So maybe it's a negative element. Seeing if it's greater than that rightmost element. So that's like a very large element. And uh, whichever one is greater, we're going to put into the current index that we're looping through in our output array. So if it was the left, um, if the left element, the absolute value of the left element was greater, you know, we put the square of that first into the result of i. Otherwise, we just put the uh, the greatest elements uh, in the sorted input array uh, the, on the right, the right pointers index, right? So this is just what we went through in that uh, little drawing solution. And yeah, this is the code for it. It's pretty straightforward. You just increment the left boundary and right boundary whenever you use one of the you know left or right pointer. We, we already went through all of it, right? Hopefully this all makes sense to you guys. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And uh, yeah. So I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. We got our time complexity down to, you know, linear. The You know, that's the golden time complexity. You know, that's they're going to be happy with that. Um, I do like this problem. I think it was a good problem. I hope that you guys understood it. Let me know if you have any questions. I uh, would appreciate if you like and subscribe to the video. I got my Patreon in the description. If you want to check it out, I got study guides for the technical interview thing and all that. So please support me if you feel like it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I did see some other solutions in here, but this is, uh, I think this is definitely the best solution. Let me know if you have any other solutions as well. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll be posting another one. Hopefully, if you're interviewing at Facebook, this helps you out. You get it at Facebook, and then you pass and you get it hired at Facebook on the spot. They're like, holy crap, he knew it off the top of his head. He is a genius. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching once again. And uh, yeah, catch you in the next video. Peace.